that good singing? That's what you call juicy singing. That's juicy Now, another thing that's blessed me, and uh, I 
told Brother Ralph about this. And I, 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 I just blessed him to see your interest. Uh, just to see your interest and see your concern. Some of you men have asked me for some information. Some of you have looked at my notebook and, and have asked me about it. Now, I'm not a modernist. I don't go around writing out sermons that I just preach to suit your ear. But I believe what you preach is this right here. Very nice. Now, my notes, and I don't, I don't have to apologize for this. My notes are verses of Scripture. That's all it is. Just verses of Scripture. And some of you have asked me about it, how I compile this. And here's what I'll share with you. And if you want to see me after service, I'll be glad to. Many of you have asked me, I have my Bible, my King James. Thank God.
Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you. I want to read some scriptures to you now. You may not have time to turn to all of them, but if you want to take and make a note of them, just write them down. I'll give you where they are, and you can jot them down and read them later. But notice, let me read again what Job said in Job chapter 6 and verse 24. He said, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue, and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. In Psalms 25 and verse 4, Show me thy ways, O Lord, and teach me thy paths. In Psalms 25 and verse 5, Lead me in thy truth, and teach me, for thou art the God of my salvation. Of thee do I wait all the day. In Psalms 27 verse 11, Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemy. In Psalms 86 and verse 11, Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and I will walk in thy truth. Unite my heart together with fear, to fear thy name. In Psalms 119, verse 66, Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have believed thy commandments. In Psalms verse, verse, uh, chapter 143, verse 10, Teach me to do good. Teach me to do thy will. For thou art my God, and my spirit is good. Lead me in the, eye, in the land of uprightness. Over and over and over again, the writers of the Bible ask God if he would teach them. So many of us have failed to recognize that many times we need to be taught. Am I right? Amen. Many times we need to be taught when we 
full of most of you. And some of you know it already. My daddy was a Cherokee Indian. My mama was a white lady. And so I'm a product of a mixed marriage, an interracial marriage. But anyway, I remember my daddy was a stern disciplinarian. Oh, when my daddy said to him, all he wanted to hear, come to hear you say was how high. That's what my daddy, the way my daddy was. He just, when he said something, he meant that. And I remember one time my daddy taught me a lesson I never have forgot. He taught me one. See, when God teaches you something, you never do forget it. Amen. Amen. How many of you have ever had God to whip you? Let me see you raise your hand. You never have forgotten, have you? Oh, sorry. And you never will either. And may I say this to you? When God's whipping you, you always know what he's whipping you for. Yeah. My daddy, one morning, before he left the house to go to work, he said, Ed, yeah, I want to tell you, son, I want you to be sure tonight when I come in, there's some dried kindling and some wood to build a good fire with in the morning. Well, I got to play in that day, and I forgot about getting the kindling and the wood. When my daddy came in that night, I never will forget it. He never screamed and hollered, and he said, boy, the next time you fail to do that, I'm going to carry you up. He only said, Dad, where's the kindling? And where's the wood at? And I didn't even know there wasn't no need to lie. There wasn't no need to try to get out of it. There wasn't no need to beat around the bush. I said, Daddy, I just forgot it. He said, Son, let's you and I go out here in the edge of the woods, and we've got to have a talk about that. Ladies and gentlemen, may I say that turned out to be the most one-sided conversation I ever got in in all of my life. As we were walking along, I heard something being pulled out of the ground. And I look back and my dad pulled up a sapling. You know how many of you know what a sapling is? Yeah. It almost makes soft timber. I think they've got a few before out of it or something like that. Anyway, he pulled it up out of the ground and got me with a hand and pushed me out from him. Him facing this way, me facing that way. And he said, Ed, I told you to do something and I knew it. I told you to do two things, to get some dry wood and some kindling. And he said, you didn't do it. And I'm going to have to teach you a lesson. I suddenly heard something coming through the air going, shh, and it landed on my launching pad. I never, <laughs> went, I never went to the moon, but I don't think I missed it much on the way to the <laughs> But I remember so well, my daddy, I thought, he said, I'm with you because I love you. And I thought, my God, he's going to kill me with love right here. <laughs> I thought he's going to kill me right here. But my daddy, I'm telling you, he taught me that day. There wasn't no blackboard, and there wasn't no chalk. And there was no teacher there but my daddy and that shouting. Well, I want you ladies and gentlemen to look up here. You've got any small children. You may want to hold them up so they can see. Here I am, 65, soon to be 66 year old, and I am the world champion kindling cutter right then. Hey, man, there ain't nobody can beat me. I'm grown. Every time I see a pine knot, I want to make kindling out of it. Amen. <laughs> I was driving along the road one day in a very expensive car, and an alpha crate blew off of the truck and went down the bank of the road. And before I could put it, I was running that alpha crate down to my car trying to make kindling out of it. Amen. <laughs> what I'm saying is, my daddy taught me a lesson. Now, and that's all Joe was asking for here. He said, Lord, teach me the whole my turn. Wouldn't that be a blessing right yeah. now?
will take a lesson and put it into practical application. I have a psalmist say in 119 and verse 67, I believe it is. He said, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you may not believe this, but I honestly believe with all of our hearts, sometimes God allows sickness to come upon us. I don't believe all the time, every time you see somebody get sick, that God's quick enough. But I believe there's times God will allow sickness to come around on bodies to say, I'm trying to learn to a lesson. Amen. 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 I was in a struggle. I did. I know it was the 23rd, 1943. God called me to preach. And I said, well, I ain't going to do it. I just, I do just mark that down. I am not going to preach. I'll sing in the quartet and, and I'll teach a little Sunday school class. And I, but now, see, that preaching business, just forget about it. You, God, you can sure forget about that. Now, the psalmist said, before I was afflicted, before I was afflicted, I went a struggle. But here it was. God called me to preach. Said, I ain't going to do it. Now, my army records are still intact. And three days from the time I learned upon my nine legs and said, Go to God, I was laying in an army hospital with my back broke three times. They called it an accident. It wasn't no accident. It was God slapping the soup out of it. Amen. Now, you said, I don't believe that. Well, you can get up on the side here. And you're burning right here. Amen. But I think God slapped me down. I mean that. I my back there drove three times. Here I was in a cast from my heels up to my neck. My arm was out like that. They had a, a contraption around my neck with weights swinging on it. And, and my old people had weights swinging on them. And my mom, when she died, had a telegram with an army sinker. I don't know where it's at now. And said your son will be a paralytic the rest of his life. He'll never be able to walk the rest of his days. His back's broke. His back is broke. He won't be able to walk. And so, as soon as we get him where we put him in a wheelchair, and we'll, we'll send him home. His days in the army is over. But I want you to get this. The calling of God is from that repentance. I lay in the hospital bed. All for months, I looked up at the ceiling. But one night, hallelujah. One night, I never said, God, touch my legs. One night, I never tried to bargain with God. I never tried to make God change his mind. But I said, Lord, I'm ready to preach. You're starting right here. Yeah, it don't make no difference. I'll preach right here in this hospital bed. I never said, God, if you'll take my back and be it, I'll get up and I'll walk all over the country and I'll preach. I said, Lord, I'm ready to do it. I went up the white flag. I surrendered. I said, here am I, Lord. Yes. I'm ready to do what God told me to do. The next morning, a bunch of doctors came to my bed. I heard one of them tell the other doctor, this young man had his back broke. He'll never be able to walk. He's a paralytic. He's paralyzed. He can't even feel. They stuck needles in my legs and I couldn't feel a thing. I was dead for my, my legs for dead. But that morning, hallelujah, I prayed and shouted all night. I was grinning all over my face. There ain't many folks got so much smiling and equipment as I've got. But I was just a grin and I was just smiling, you know. And before I was one of them says, I, I believe the old boy's about to crack up on the front. <laughs> <laughs> I was just a smiling, you know. And one of them said, well, son, you seem awful happy this morning. I said, yes, sir. Doctor, I'm going to walk again. He said, boy, you might as well accept it. You will never walk again as long as you live. I, I, and boy, I made him mad. It didn't mean good, but it did. I said, Doctor, last night, I talked to my family doctor. <laughs> and he said, you going to get up and walk again. Boy, he got as mad as a devil. He said, I knew you were going to crack it up. He said, there ain't no fun in this room. Amen. Amen. Oh, folks, listen to me right now. Before I was afflicted, before God slapped me down, I, I went back and stubborn and rebellious on God. Don't you wear your head back and tell God you won't do so and so. 
Well, 
moving about in Acts chapter 5. He said in verse 1, that a certain man named Ananias was with Sapphire and wife, sold the procession, and kept back part of the price, his wife also being previous men, and thought that brought a certain part of it and laid at the apostles' feet. And Peter said, Ananias, why say to fill thy heart to lie the Holy Ghost? And to keep that part of the price of the land, while it remained, was it not thine own? After it was sold, was it not thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto man, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. Watch it. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. Sometimes God has to bring judgment among us. To make us see, he's not joking. Right. God killed that, and I suppose he killed some fire too. Am I right, preacher? Right. No problem. I'm not like this. I'm sitting like I have all. Amen. Right. But my notice what happened. The judgment of God fell on me. You notice what he said? Great fear. I just see you, brothers and sisters.
push on far, but not being consumed. I don't even believe the leaves were scorched. Blessed. Then after a while, Moses got up looking around and God said, Moses, pull your shoes off, boy. You're on holy this isn't the church here. This is the building. But I believe she's been dedicated. I believe she's been dedicated to the worship of a holy God. You ought to never let your kids mark it or something. You ought to never throw down a piece of chewing gum paper. You ought to come in here Treat the house of God like some uh, smokehouse. This is God's house. When you see a little piece of trash, you want to reach out. Somebody said, You think this is holy ground? Yeah. This is holy meat, God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, folks, you know our awareness of the presence of God is too abstract. We need to see the perfectness and the holiness and the beauty of all that. Brother Lamb, I can say I'm just an old country clock out of the future. And I'm really trying to help you people. I'm trying to help you. These are his making bigger. I'm trying to help How many of you still with me? Some of you had to wait until five little bit to get your arm up. That's all right. You might have a little bag or something. Amen. Then turn aside. The sick folks are sick. God said, take off your shoes. You're on the holy ground. Now, God works with sometimes. You remember Elijah? You remember there was a, a, a man that come to him to get the leprosy cured? I'm not going to go through the whole story. And after the leprosy was cured, do you remember that Naaman tried to pay him for what he'd done? You remember that? Yeah. How many of you have been doing I'm trying to keep you with me. I don't just sit there and your mind wandering off the way. So I would say to draw in the laundry to your mind. Yes. And the old man of God wouldn't pay no money for it. And certainly, he had a lot. The man of God in the back of the house, he took all that for money. Said that, the old man of God changed his mind. You might have to do something here to show you appreciate it. I think I'll just read this passage. Well, I don't know. And the Lord said, Well, you might be little something here, you know, kind of fat, but the kid isn't he? Here he goes running back to the man of God. The man of God is full of I'm trying to take you something. If God's trying to get something through your heart, you better listen to him. You better listen to him. Then last of all, then I'm going to close. Last of all, I'm going to get over in the area right now. And if you don't listen to me close, you're going to walk blind on me. And God may judge you. God may judge you. I want you to see something else. How God chases people. The Bible says who he loves, he rebukes and chases. And that one that's without chastisement is illegitimate, a bastard, and not a son. Uh, if you're going out with sin and God's not with you, you don't belong to God. Hello? Watch it. Watch it. Now listen carefully. And if you don't fully understand it, come to me tonight and close the church and ask me what I mean. Please do. I will be offended and I'll explain it to you again. The Bible said about Moses. That he was a meek man. The meekest of all men. I don't mean he was a compromiser. I don't mean he was a compromiser. He was just meek. Had a sweet spirit. 
Hollywood is a franchise of movies. I'm Josh and Wayne. Yeah. And you don't have to go to the Moses married an Ethiopian man. I'm watching you. I can see every print in your eyeballs. I'm going to go to it. And look up here. Look up here at me. I know what trick it is. I remember the boy at the outfit of the And her mom was a student who played with a half of this boy. And had a red daddy and a black mom. And he called her name to get her to play with A preacher told me not too long ago. I had a hard time with you because the Bible told you to be a half of
quiet in your mouth, that body you have a nice funeral to you. Thank you. 
that you need to lay aside every weight and sin that does so easily to set you and love with patience the race that is set before you, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finish of our faith. Amen. Who can tell us? Set it Thank you. 